20 in the renal problem set in which we're comparing the clearance values for inulin and creatinine and trying to come to a conclusion. So when we're doing clearance problems, the clearance of inulin and creatinine can both be used to indicate the GFR. However, the best way to indicate GFR is to use inulin. And that is because inulin is a carbohydrate that must be injected into the body to do these studies, but the reason why it's what we consider the gold standard for GFR measurement is because it is filtered at the glomerulus, but it's not reabsorbed or secreted. So for those reasons, it's a very good indicator of GFR that we can always rely on. Now, in order to calculate the GFR using inulin, we would just do a simple clearance equation. So you'll recall that our clearance equation is the urine concentration of inulin over the plasma concentration of inulin times the urine flow rate, which it's given to us in this problem. That would be 180 milligrams per milliliter in the urine, 3 milligrams per milliliter in the plasma, and we have a urine flow rate of 2 milliliters per minute. So that would be equivalent to 60 times 2, which equal, would equal 120 milliliters per minute, which is actually an exactly normal value for the GFR using inulin. Now, since this is our gold standard, we know that this works, we know that that's a normal value, we can go ahead and eliminate choice B because GFR is not abnormally high. This is a normal value for the clearance of inulin and thus the GFR. So now we have to compare this to creatinine. So with creatinine, this is a substance that's a little bit easier to use because it's already present in the body. It's a breakdown product of creatine phosphate, so you can use it as an indicator of GFR without having to inject anything into the patient. It's actually a simpler test that they can perform to do this. So you can usually use it as an indicator of GFR, and we'll talk about why, but it's not as reliable as our inulin. Let's go ahead and calculate GFR using the clearance of creatinine. So it's the same procedure we used above. So it would be the urine concentration of creatinine over the plasma concentration of creatinine times the urine flow rate. So in this case, that would be equal to 50 milligrams per milliliter in the urine, one milligram per milliliter in the plasma, and once again, our urine flow rate is two milliliters per minute. So we can see that that would be equal to 100 milliliters per minute. And by the way, just as something that might help you, the way I always remembered which one should go on top in our U to P ratio is I just remember up. So if you think of up, that's going to make it a lot easier to remember which one you put in the numerator versus the denominator. Okay, so something's going on here. Our clearance of inulin told us something different than our clearance of creatinine. And remember that we can always use inulin. Creatinine is the one we can use most of the time, but sometimes things go wrong, and it appeared that something did go wrong in this situation. And um, so if we go over to our choices, one thing that it says is that creatinine undergoes net secretion. So how can we tell that? Well, we could actually do a relative clearance to inulin. So if you remember, we went through in class that you can compare the U to P re, uh, ratio for any substance relative to that of inulin. And the video that we also presented on relative inulin UP ratios. And that would give us an indication of whether the substance was secreted or reabsorbed. Now here what we would get is we can just go ahead and use the entire clearance equation because the two urine flow rates would cancel out. So that would be 100 over 120, which would be a value less than 1. And if you remember that diagram, anything less than 1 actually indicates that a substance was undergoing net reabsorption. 
So we can go ahead and tell from that that A is also incorrect. And there must be something else going on with the creatinine. So let's take a step back and think about why we can use creatinine anyway, typically, and what are some of the things that could go wrong with this measurement using creatinine. All right, so let's look at the clearance of creatinine and talk about why we can usually use it as an indicator of the GFR. Okay. So one interesting thing about creatinine is it is filtered, much like inulin, but it's also slightly secreted as it passes through the nephron. So theoretically, this would make it actually a very poor measurement of the GFR, because what that would tend to do is, if we're secreting something, that would increase our urine concentration of creatinine and decrease our plasma concentration of creatinine as you secrete it from the plasma into the urine. So if this were the only thing going on, we would tend to, no matter when we used creatinine, overestimate the GFR. Now, it's worth mentioning, this is normal, okay? Anytime creatinine's in the circulation, it's being slightly secreted. So this is telling us that theoretically, when we were starting to use creatinine as an indicator, it would be a poor indicator because it would overestimate the GFR. So there has to be something else that's normally going on. Well, the way that they measure creatinine in the plasma is they use a chromogenic process. So if there were little particles of creatinine over here, they would be absorbing a specific wavelength of light and we would be able to detect the plasma concentration. But interestingly enough, there's some other substances that are in there that are also detected in this chromogenic process when we're detecting things in the plasma. So what this would tend to do is these other substances are absorbing the same wavelength of light that creatinine is, and so this would produce an artificially high detected plasma concentration of creatinine. And so if that index was just by itself, it would tend to underestimate the GFR. So what you have are two different things that are always going on. You've got this slight secretion of the creatinine as we go through the nephron. We also have this issue with the chromogenic detection of the creatinine in the plasma, though, which would tend to underestimate the GFR. So in normal situations, the reason why we can use creatinine as an indicator is because these two processes cancel one another out. We've got too high of a value in the numerator. We also have too high of a value in the denominator. So the two issues cancel one another out, and we can actually use creatinine clearance as an indicator of the GFR. So remember that what we're talking about over here, this is what happens normally. Okay. So what we need to think about in this problem was, well, what could have happened to prevent us from using the creatinine? So now we need to go back to the problem where something went wrong. And we saw that because our values for clearance of creatinine was not the same as the value for the clearance of inulin, which is our gold standard. Okay, so let's talk about what could have happened. Well, we know that if we go back to our numbers with the creatinine, we underestimated the GFR. Okay, so something went wrong where we underestimated the GFR. Now, there's two different ways that could happen. It could be that our urine concentration of creatinine was too low. Okay, so our numerator of our equation was too low of a number. Or our plasma concentration of creatinine was too high, meaning that we were dividing by a larger number, so we got a smaller result. So let's go through our two responses that are left, because we've already eliminated A and B, 
and subsequently we would have also eliminated E as well. All right, so C. If we go to C, it says that there are no chromogens present or they're absent from the plasma. So what would that do? Well, if there's no chromogens, remember when we go back over here, it's the chromogens that tend to raise up that plasma concentration of the creatinine. So with response C, what that would do when the chromogens are absent is decrease our plasma concentration of creatinine. That's the exact opposite of what we should be seeing here. In fact, this would tend to cause an overestimation of the GFR if in fact that were the case. So we can eliminate C as a potential answer. All right, so by process of elimination, that does leave us with one, but let's go through and talk about why that one is correct. So creatinine secretion may be well below normal. So we talked about over here the secretion that tends to increase the urine concentration of creatinine and decrease the plasma concentration. So if that isn't happening as much, so with response D, that would be decreasing our urine concentration of creatinine, increasing our plasma concentration of creatinine, and that's exactly what we were hoping to see. So if the secretion's down, that would mean that we're not pushing as much from the plasma into the urine, so urine values of creatinine will drop, plasma concentration will start to rise, and if we go back to our equation, that would make our GFR start to drop, the detected GFR that we're measuring with creatinine. Now our real GFR hasn't changed because we saw that the GFR with inulin is normal. It's just that the way that we detect it with creatinine, something's happening that's not allowing us to do that. So the correct response here would be response D. We couldn't use creatinine clearance as a reliable indicator of GFR in this case because for some reason the creatinine secretion is well below normal. So hopefully this helped you to manipulate the different equations for clearance using inulin and creatinine. If you have any questions about this material, please feel free to contact me in class. Thank you.